Additionally, in this front area, which was mostly from the 1860s, we have, in the period of the 1930s, we had a major restoration in St. Mary's Church. And one of the major restorations was the addition of this 10 foot tall crucifix. With, and on either point of the crucifix are the uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. An interesting story about this crucifix, it was uh, carved by a man named Thomas Zinner. He was a member of St. Mary's Parish and he was also part of Josephinium uh, Church Furniture Company. And I, my daughters knew his granddaughter and they told her the story that when Thomas was putting together the crucifix, one thing he could not do was nail Jesus to the cross. So he had to have somebody else attach Jesus to the crucifix because he could not do it. He broke down and trying to do it. Some other uh, interesting changes that happened after the 1860s that changed the, the sanctuary a bit. There's a wooden uh, covering across the back and the sides of the Rereros. Those were actually uh, from a Presbyterian church. And it's a very interesting, the carver of those uh, carved his, the, the names of his sons, one on each side. They both died in, uh, as a result of uh, World War I. Uh, another thing, uh, in the, as a result of the Vatican II in the 1960s, the altar was removed back in the back, uh, mainly because it was felt that the priest should face the people instead of his back. Now, one of the reasons why the priest was there at the altar facing east is because Jerusalem was in the east and the congregation and the priest were facing Jerusalem. Uh, you may not realize it, but this church is built on an east-west axis for just this purpose that the, the priest who was saying the mass would be facing Jerusalem as would the congregation. Uh, the first three churches in Columbus, Ohio are built on the east-west axis just for that reason. Saint, uh, Holy Cross, St. Patrick's, and St. Mary's both face east-west with the altar on the east end so the priest could face uh, Jerusalem. The, the, the fourth church, uh, strangely enough, was St. Joseph's Cathedral. And it was the first church not built on an east-west axis. Uh, I don't know. Strange things in, in, in our technicalities in our church. Uh, that the altar that was up there, part of it was brought down here and formed into a table, and then it disappeared. Uh, I saw it uh, at, back in the uh, 2016, 2017. It, it was stored somewhere in the uh, Joseph, in the uh, museum that we have here in Columbus. And then this uh, table was constructed. Uh, interestingly enough, in the in this ambo was uh, from a uh, Methodist church, and the re the reason we had to get this the ambo that pulpit was torn down. The bottom part of the pulpit was put over here as an ambo, and then that that top of the pulpit was lowered, and the tabernacle was put over there on a pillar. And then when uh, in the 2016 area, the pulpit went back in its original place. The uh, top of it was moved up. Also, it's one of the facts about this front uh, sanctuary area is that altar is movable. We had the Latin mass on certain days when the priest was up on that altar facing east. It was, it was I think it was two days a week. We had that in the mornings. And then uh, we had at the nine o'clock mass from this altar where the priest was facing the people. And then at the 11.30 mass, we have what used to be called a folk group uh, that's sort of evolved over the years. And uh, when we had the Latin mass so that the people could see what was, the, what was going on in the mass, this altar was moved over to the side for the Latin Mass. And then uh, after the Latin Mass was over, the older boys would get over here, 
Move the altar back to the center. Hopefully I've got it centered or I'll be in trouble. Uh, for the 1130 Mass. <laughs> 